a lot of a lot of stuff going on with him backstage, Matt, wasn't there? <laughs> like, you know, the fights breaking out with him. <laughs> yeah, it's quite an unbelievable thing. Uh, now, this time as, as well, I do remember, just had a flashback, the fact we're talking about tag team matches, that I remember always enjoying the NXT tag matches compared to the main roster ones, Matt. Like, they were so much doing better things, more original. They weren't doing the same old stuff that I was seeing on the WWE stuff. So, uh, this was a really good time for the NXT brand as far as tag teams were going. Like, this was probably them at their peak, I would say, at this point. Yeah, we did mention a team that we probably won't see on this pay-per-view. It was uh, the Revival, wasn't it? Um, and the work they did back in NXT oh, yeah. was, was brilliant. I mean, it was a real... like No wonder why they got their name, the Revival, because it was a real throwback to the yeah. old style of wrestling. And that's when tag team wrestling was really at its best, sort of in the sort of late 80s, early 90s, you know, yeah. every team had and you, personality about them. You saw those guys later on this year, Matt, didn't you? At the would have been the London one because I remember them, like the the fans going, "Who are you? Which one are you?" and all that stuff. I remember the oh, chants yeah. going on. So, and they were like very. So, I mean, literally in what three months they got very popular after this uh, event. So, they had a very quick rise to the top. But they were so consistent and doing such. What they were doing was more than anything is they were kind of if you was watching them. It was the closest thing to making sense, I think, from something that you know isn't real, but they were doing the things that, you know, a, a team would do, uh, tagging in and out all the time and keying off the, the one person, just the little things. But you know what I'm going to say, Matt, out of all these teams, uh, including the VOD villains, when they got to the main roster, nobody got a harsher deal than Dash and Dawson. Like, tr- those two guys got the worst push from an NXT tag team point of view. And I'm I'm talking about VOD villains, I'm talking about you know the Ascension, all of them. Um they got the worst deal out of everyone, um really. And I, I, it's unbelievable to think about it. Because they were so talented. And they are talented, wow. but you know. Wow, worse than the Ascension. <laughs> <laughs> Can I can't even fathom it. Yeah, exactly. It's it's crazy. You know, even people like Jim Cornette come out and they say I'd love to tag uh, sorry not tag I'd love to manage these two guys because you know they're that good and yet WWE for some reason no they're not (laughs) not on the main roster they're not they would be in the top 10 you know or or, 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 maybe not go that far top 20 the actual most important people in the company if WWE took its tag team division seriously Mm. but it really doesn't uh, and if they did take the tag team division seriously, they would have a women's tag team title. But that's the thing for another day. You know, yeah. To that another <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. Though. Uh, yeah. So real shame on those two guys as we uh, we're seeing this match uh, take place now. So I mean, in in this one, I was, I mean, I remember pretty much. I've got to say, like, this is one of those shows, Matt. And you know, I've gone to a few in the past, and and even since then, but. This is the one show that I would say was the most consistent that I was very much engaged in. Like, there are shows I go to, and sometimes I'm very much in and out. I'm, I'm either really into something, but then by the next time the, ma- the other match comes on, I'm like, nah, I'm not really feeling it. This was the one show I would say was probably my most consistent as far as being like a fan of just being in the moment and just enjoying everything that I was seeing. And, you know, it wasn't that I was kind of having all the victories I wanted or anything like that. It was just the fact that these guys were doing a a good enough job of keeping me sort of like, you know, hooked on what I was watching. Like, I just did not get out of my seat this entire show. Uh, I just literally wanted to watch the whole thing. And uh, it was was that good of a show, this one, um, top to bottom. As I remember it being in the live audience now, of course, when you watch these things back, it can be a bit different, Matt, can't it? I mean, you get the commentators, you get more of a story. But as far as a live show goes, it is difficult to always just be totally engaged, Matt, because there's a lot of things going on in and around you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think this is one of the rare occasions where they got the, uh, the pacing of the night uh, pretty much spot on. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is only 
one criticism I'll give to that, but I'll, I'll probably come up with that later. You know, let yeah. the night progress and I'll mm-hmm. tell you where I will change the pacing. Mm-hmm. But I think for ninety percent of this entire night, they got that spot on. I mean, yeah. we had a great match with Bushin Van der Liga, a great singles match. You know, a tag team match after that. That's a bit of a change of direction. You know, the fans mm-hmm. will still be into that. So I think we are uh, we'll build we'll build it quite nicely. Yeah. Yeah, and this is a good match that's far. Like I'm watching this, uh, enjoying it. Both all you know, all four uh, participants in the ring, giving it their all on this one. And uh, again, you know, lots of pressure for all these guys because this was a big deal for them. I'm sure you know, first time in, maybe for a few of these guys. In fact, for a lot of these guys in front of the sort of big audience, um, even from the indies, this would have been like the biggest audience at, up until this point. So. Um, it was quite a big deal here uh, to get yourself over. <laughs> like a crazy dive tag. <laughs> so you see Gotch giving it all now. Remember these guys, uh, you know what I remember now thinking about it, Matt, is this this was the year I bought the 2K game. I got back into the games again and I remember playing as the oh, Rod yeah. Villains. Nice. Yeah. We both had that idea. It was like, this is going to be so good. Yeah, we'll have it's NXT really on it. So that was my thing. Like, oh, <laughs> Back to you, Carl. <laughs> it was bloody shocking, wasn't it? Yeah, done it. Done everything right, but that, and that was the most key part. Of it. Little did we know how big those interviews. That was basically the main part of the game. It's one of the biggest <laughs> ones they cocked up that part. see Murphy up there now it's like he's going to go for that big suplex no no I really don't remember any of this match I've got to be honest and it's not a bad thing on these guys it's just that there's so many other big focal points of this night including the first match even that uh, really stand out in my mind but this is great one I mean you look at that audience in the background people are standing I mean they're into this match like it's not oh, yeah. like just a normal like I know we, I'm takeovers are quite big, but like the reaction that they're pulling from these fans for you know the first time in front of like I say a big audience at this time a different kind of audience from Full Sail um, in this New York crowd this is this is a big deal and just goes to show you how much people wanted this to work this NXT like people were ready for this map for something new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh, nice uh, slap going yeah, on there. I think it was crazy about the fans back then. I think the fans liked blue pants more than liked Alexa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a bad decision that was at the time. <laughs> yeah, I remember she was over. I wasn't really into it, but I remember that night people were really rooting for her. You see a close fall there, near fall. There you go. Yeah, and look at that, man. Fans are like, you know, they're loving it. Yeah. They're ready for yeah, this. Like, they, they were good heels, so I think people, they did their job well. I think yeah. Like, just lose their titles. Yeah. Yeah, they were ready for this, and, you know, this is how over a team was at one point. Now, obviously, you see them go to the main roster and see what happened, but, you know. If done right and correctly, this is the sort of reaction you can get when it all goes right, you know. And so, yeah, new uh, new it's tag team three champions. Three What's that, mate? I said in the space of three years, it can all go wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yep, it can. It doesn't, it doesn't seem long, but uh, in wrestling terms, especially in today's age, uh, it can definitely go wrong. Well, particularly in NXT, I think you've only got like a shelf life of a maximum two years there. You go, that's something that's like what you get there, really. Isn't it? Yeah. Yep. No, you're right. And, uh, this was a good match. You know, this was uh, very good. I'd, I'd completely forgotten most of it. I'd forgot even about this match. So this was a nice surprise, and you know, the fact that there were new tag team champions that night as well. It's like two matches that have kind of given you good quality in the ring, but also like giving you like the 
the championship change in the first one as well gives you that big surprise that uh, uh, Liger would win. So, um, you know, it's uh, two, two, two matches, I'd say two down and uh, two very good matches thus far. Like, I'm happy at this point, even watching it back. Um, although people are really into her for some reason, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, back then I can understand maybe uh, it was mm-hmm. fun and everything. But looking at her now on the big screen in front of my face, she's very pantomime, you know, she's very, like, characterised in her actions. Mm-hmm. It seems like she's definitely trying hard at the moment. Uh, I don't think it really came natural to her at all. It's not, nothing like it does with Alexa. I think I just spotted us a little while back as well, Matt, on the uh, <laughs> the audience. It's, uh, doesn't go... There, there we go, Matt. We we, we, we went there. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Uh, a mutual friend uh, wanted to go and see the Warriors part, so there we were down there. And seems to be quite heavy into it. I don't know why they put it on so much here, but yeah, there you go, Coney Island. We didn't see Coney Island of a night, though, did we, Matt? That's the difference, I suppose. Oh, yes. Yeah, there we go, the official theme, which I do not remember uh, at this point. Anything of that? Someone's arrived. Oh, yes. They were doing a good job, like, of this whole backstage stuff as well, like, for NXT. This was uh, very filling in the blanks here, doing well. Oh, there we go. Wow, there's a guy that we miss. Yeah, and he was being made a big deal at this point uh, because he was, like, he was already on the main roster. He was going to be doing the thing with that guy from Arrow on SummerSlam, which didn't go down tremendously great, and he was kind of supporting Finn Balor at this time. Cesaro, Matt, my God. And you know another guy who we probably don't think of as much of for having tremendous matches on NXT, but Cesaro definitely lit that place up for a while. Oh yeah. <laughs> and there we are, Rick Rubin there. I remember seeing that guy. He very very much stood out, didn't he? This guy in the audience, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can really be seen with that kind of beard. <laughs> Looks serious as well. It looks like he was getting in on it. Then it's like. And here we go now in Matt, um, 10, Ty Dillinger. This thing hadn't really caught on as much as it would do back then. No. I think, I think it really took off uh, just shortly after. I mean, those people were there with the 10 signs then. But, you know, it wasn't as bad as what it's got to today, where you can't even do a 10 count without mm. just having 10 on every number. <laughs> just made me laugh to think back to, uh, of course, the... Uh, the the last WWE pay-per-view between Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler and then bloody numbers from the audience <laughs> when they were counting down the Iron Man match this makes me think of Tony well, it was more the buzzer <laughs> <laughs> yeah hang you know that's probably going to come up again because so much has been said about it but um, yeah for those of you that didn't see it live you probably didn't get the full humour in it all but I mean must have been quite frustrating for those two guys but the amount of times uh, they've edited since there is still a scene I think on there where you can see like my god it's worse but (laughs) they were getting so frustrated it was kind of humorous now here we go Matt Uh, Apollo Crews um, who was obviously let's smile as much as you can but I remember this guy on the indies at this time, Matt, and I remember you, I remember turning to you in the audience, Matt, saying, watch this guy, he's really good, yeah. he's exciting, I'm glad WWE have got him, and um, unfortunately, Matt, yeah, he had a, a fairly reasonable run on NXT, I wouldn't say it was overly breathtaking, but by the time he got to that main roster, unfortunately his character had not, never developed really in NXT all that much. And uh, he was left just to do the whole baby face smiling every time. Uh, that was it. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, no personality. Yeah, I, I, I definitely remember this that we're, that we're seeing here. Uh, and we're going to have some more to say about this at the end of the match. Mm. <laughs> that much. Uh, but yeah, I, I was watching the match and I thought the guy was really good. And then, you, know, you get that feeling in your head like this guy could really be a star. You know, he's got that kind of ability about him. Uh, it just turns out these days that you know, it's come at a time when everybody has that kind of look about them now. There's loads of people with muscles that are high flying and agile, but you know I feel like they still could have done more with the guy. Uh, it's just a shame that 
it's just too much smiling, too much be nice. There's a uh, they, they seem afraid sometimes to turn people ill. I mean, I know it doesn't.